Sleep apnea is a completely abnormal way of breathing. What happens is at frequent intervals during the night, the patient stops breathing and then the compensatory mechanisms kick in and then he restarts breathing. But during those periods where he stops breathing, the system suffers a lack of oxygen. As soon as he resumes breathing, there is something called a sympathetic surge in the body where certain hormones are released in the body as a consequence of that effort to restart breathing. So firstly, on account of the low oxygen levels, the system is suffering some damage. Secondly, as a consequence of the systemic surge, there are in, in enormous stresses that are generated within the body, which can have adverse consequences, particularly cardiovascular consequences. So that is basically the genesis of uh, sleep apnea. During night, night is a period of what we call as autonomic instability. The nervous system is relaxed during the night. There are some changes which occur at night which try to rectify or rather restore the body. And these changes, are the body's physiology is completely different from that during the daytime. During night, especially during a phase of what is called as REM sleep, the person is predisposed to have irregular heartbeats. That's the predisposition. But if such a patient has obstructive sleep apnea, the combination of the sympathetic stresses, the combination of hypoxia superimposed on this can make his heart breathe either very fast, which is called tachycardia, or breathe very, very slow, which is called bradycardia. And if the heart in breathing, in, in beating fast or in beating slow, uh, starts to have an abnormal rhythm, then the patient can suffer very grave consequences and certain of these patients just die during the night. I think it's very easy to say that a person is tired because he's working too hard or he's tired because he's concentrating or thinking, but we tend to miss the, uh, the forest because of the trees. We can't see the forest because there are too many trees. And the obvious thing is if such a patient is obese and he's likely to have sleep apnea, the sleep apnea may be uh, accounting for mo most of his fatigue and because of his, you know, most of the symptoms. So I would say that uh, it has a considerable impact on our lives with the obesity epidemic, uh, with the jobs which are becoming increasingly uh, computer dependent and sedentary, uh, uh, sleep apnea is kicking in in a big way. And when these people uh, suffer as a consequence of sleep apnea, they, these effects spill over into their daily lives. They cannot function properly. They don't have the energy. They don't have the ability to communicate properly. They get irritable. Their effectiveness and efficacy at, at, at the job falls. They have marital discord. It, it, affects almost every component of the lives and as a consequence of the sleep apnea if the patient is dull and he cannot exercise he begins to gain more weight which has a even worsening effect on the sleep apnea itself so it's like a vicious circle today there is thinking that snoring per se even without sleep apnea can contribute to what is called as carotid artery artery atherosclerosis, which means to say there is a buildup of some plaque in the carotid arteries and if this plaque gets dislodged, it can have uh, adverse consequences on the brain circulation. So it's not uh, sleep apnea per se. The, um, uh, the significance of these findings may extend even well beyond, beyond sleep apnea. Innovation and you. Philips.